Welcome back to another Blender tutorial. For this week, I want to recreate one of my oldest pieces in Blender, which is just this pen floating above a rippling surface. So first, I've got to make the ripples. And there are quite a few ways to make ripples in Blender. So I've just been trying multiple ways. And I'm just going to share the ways that I found work the best for me. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. There are quite different ways to make ripples. So depending on what your use case is, some of these might work, some might not work. My first thought when making ripples was fluid simulations. You know, it's water, it's going to be the best for making water droplets. But actually, it does not work that well. It lacks a little bit of refinement and detail. The fluid simulation definitely has its place in Blender. It's just not for this. So I would suggest not using fluid simulations. The next way that came to mind was just you know, manually modeling it. So to do that, I started with a plane and then I subdivided it, let's say about 50 times. Once you subdivide it, grab the center vertice and then make sure you have proportional editing on with the smooth curve enabled. Then just view it from the side, grab it and increase that by scrolling your scroll wheel. Then move it up the z-axis with it all the way to the max. Grab it again, and then just make the proportional editing circle a bit smaller, and then move it down. And then just repeat this, move it up, and then move it down. Shade it to smooth, and there we have a water droplet or a ripple impact, and it looks pretty it looks okay to be honest um rushed it a bit but you know if it's far away if it's just in the background it really doesn't need that much detail a way to level up this manually modeling it is instead of starting with a square we start with a circle so add a circle i'm going to increase the vertices vertices to 64. hit f to give it a face i to insert it and move it all the way into the center now, because we have a circle, instead of subdividing, we can use loop cuts by just hitting Ctrl R and scrolling on our mouse wheel. Give it a bunch of loop cuts, and then just using the Alt click to select a whole line or a whole circle. I'm going to select circle, move it up, grab the next circle, move it up. and then just continue doing this for as far as I want. And then shade smooth, and there we go, some pretty convincing ripples. The problem with this is it's perfectly symmetrical and nothing in nature is perfect. So to make it look a little bit more realistic, you'd probably have to just go around, you know, manually making some blemishes and bumps and already just after adding a couple bumps, it'll start to look a little bit more realistic. The problem with this is if you have to do lots of raindrops, this is going to be quite tedious, especially if all of them have to be unique. But if you just wanted one, it's quite quick and you get a lot of control over it. The next way would be using the dynamic paintbrush, which is going to end up looking something like this. It might look a little bit complicated, but it is super easy. It's only a few clicks. So first, let's start with adding the canvas. I'm just going to use a cube. Then on the right side, in the physics properties, we're going to go to dynamic paint. Make sure type is selected to canvas and then click add canvas. Then scroll down where it says surface type. And we're going to change it from paint to waves. That's all we have to change for now. Next. We're going to need to add a bit more vertices to our cube. So I'm going to subdivide it. I'm going to add 50 subdivisions. You can go a bit more for higher quality, but as soon as you get a little bit higher, the simulation is going to really slow down your computer. So depending on what hardware you want, I rate just start with 50 and then later on tweak it to get the exact settings you want. Next, we're going to have to add a brush. So I'm going to add a UV sphere for the brush, scale it down, move it up and then just shade it to smooth. Now same with the canvas, just go to the physics tab, add dynamic paint, 
But now instead of saying type canvas, we're going to say type brush. Add brush, and there's no settings on the brush you need to change. As long as it's on mesh volume and depth change, it'll work. Next, we're going to have to animate the brush. So make sure your timeline is open and you're on the first frame. Then grab your brush, move it to where you want it to start, hit I, and then we're just going to open the insert keyframe menu and then just select location. Next, move your marker or your timeline to the next frame. I'm going to say 40. Then I'm going to move the ball all the way there and then hit insert location. Now this is going to play an animation which moves the ball. And just by adding that, as you can see, we already have some kind of a simulation. Next we could do is shade the cube to smooth. And now we've got some ripples. Next, I'll just quickly show some of the general settings of the brush tool. So the ones that you might want to change is speed. Most of these are pretty self-explanatory. So speed, if we make that way slower, it's just going to slow the speed of the ripples. But if you make it too slow, it's going to almost act like jelly or silicon. So let's say 60% and hit play. And there, just slows the speed of the ripples. Just going to set that back to one. The next one is dampening. Now this is going to depend on how big the waves or the ripples can be. So when it's on 0 0.01, there's no dampening. So the waves will be as big as possible. Whereas if you scroll it all the way to one, there's going to be no waves. The next setting is spring. That depends on how quickly the waves go back to flat. So if you turn the spring all the way down, see, let me just leave dampening. There we go. If you turn the spring all the way down, the waves are quite bubbly. As you can see, they don't really ever get flat, but if we turn spring all the way up to one, they wave once and they should get flat quite quickly. There you go. The surface is smooth quite quickly. Other than that, there's no other really settings you might want to change. Um, you might want to change open borders. So if you're working on a plane, if open borders is selected, the waves will just go past the corners. Whereas if it's not selected, they'll bounce off the corners as if there was an invisible wall there. Okay, so now that we have a general understanding of dynamic, well, the dynamic brush, let's use it to make some water droplets. I'm going to start by adding a plane. And then I'm going to subdivide it, let's say a hundred times. Quite a high dense mesh, but it'll be good for the simulation. Then next, I'm going to go to the right corner, add dynamic paint, select canvas type, add canvas, and then change from paint to wave, like we've done before. Now let's get our brush, add a UV sphere, scale it down. Move it up there. And then once again, go to dynamic paints, change from canvas to brush, and then add brush. Gonna move the timeline all the way to the first frame, hit I to insert a location, and then move it down. Whoopsie, first gotta change this. Let's move it down to 20 or 40. Move it down there and hit I for location. Now we've got a little animation. Now with that animation, we've got one ripple, but you know, they're very soft, they're not that great. We can try to just change some of the settings, but let's say slurring the speed down, turning off dampening, lowering the springiness. It'll help with a bit, but you know, there's not much we can do. What I've found that really helps is just make more impacts. So though it might be, you might be wanting to just get one more to drop it, we're actually gonna have tons of impacts to simulate more ripples. So the best way to do this is just select both keyframes, hit Control C to copy it, and then just paste it. As you can see, we've now created an animation of the water or the ball constantly hitting the water. And now this is gonna create us a lot more ripples. So already there, we've got quite a few more ripples.
Now, once we've got ripples that we're kind of happy with, we can now make sure it's shade to smooth. And they're still a little bit choppy. So what we could do is we can add a modifier, go to subsurface division, and then crank it up to two. Now it should be perfectly smooth. You can also add a texture. So I'm just going to add a simple glass texture. And there we have quite a realistic looking ripple, but there are still a few problems that we can fix. Firstly, it's perfectly symmetrical. So there's two ways to add problems to the simulation. Let's first make sure our subdivision modifier is turned off for this, because that's going to lag our simulation quite a bit. So the first way to add defects would be to add an obstacle. So we can add a cube, scale it down, move it into the plane, go to the physics property, dynamic paint, change from canvas to brush. Once you've added the brush, just go down and change the type from depth change to obstacle. Now when we play the simulation, it's going to create an obstacle. Now this would be a way you could just hide that. Obviously if we made it a little bit smoother, this is quite an increase or quite an intense obstacle. But you know, it's added a little bit of imperfection to the ripples, but still even with this obstacle, the waves are quite symmetrical. So what I've found to be a better way, instead of using obstacles, take your surface and just manually select a few places you want to make some bumps and divides. So I'm just going to select a few little holes here. And then just proportionally edit them up a bit. I'm going to do this a few times, kind of getting a couple bumps and then a few dips. Move it up. And then now I'm going to make a little bit of dips or drops. And just move them down a bit. So now we've added a little bit of imperfection to our surface, but it should now still work perfectly with the simulation. And there we go. Now we still have the water simulation, but these little bits of bumps and stuff have added some real nice imperfections, making the water still look like a ripple, but it doesn't look perfect. It looks natural. Now we can go back to our modify tab, enable our subsurf to get that smooth texture and see what it looks like now. Now it's looking pretty realistic. You can play around with these settings a bit. One setting that often helps when I want to put more ripples is go onto the canvas, go into the physics tab, and then just change the speed. If you're not using it for an animation and you just need it for still render, you can slow the speed down to an unrealistic amount just to increase the amount of ripples. However, if you wanted this for simulation for an animation, you're going to probably want to keep the speed around, I'd say between 0.6 and 1. This way it still works well with the simulation, but the ripples still look realistic. Once you've determined on the frame you want, you can scroll through to select. So I quite like the look of this frame. Now, what we can do is we can say convert to mesh. And once you convert it to mesh, it's going to give you a super high dense mesh. But now you can move this without having to worry about the simulation affecting it. You can actually hide that ball. Go there. And now we can render. Oopsie. We can now start rendering the scene. So that's how I make ripples in Blender. I hope you guys found that video interesting and at least useful. I find it quite fascinating all the different approaches you can take to the same task in Blender. And as always, have a fantastic day and thanks for watching. See you in the next video.